Okay, and we're recording. Let's see, we have Sargus and Vix requesting to speak, so I'll drag you in, Sargus. Uh, I've given you an invitation, so you have to accept it again. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hey. Everything good on your part? Do you have any question for us? Hi, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Yes. Ah, okay, good. Uh, firstly, I want to say thanks for the game. I'm playing Gladius for a long time now, and it's really a fun game. And uh, I wanted to ask if... Uh, I'm not sure if, if anyone asked, but are you guys planning to add a more uh, variety for like Legion and Chapters or Dynasties in, in the future, or you just uh, going to leave it for the... Um, uh, for models to do it. Would you like to take um, that? Yeah. yeah, like I think for chapters, for us priority has definitely um, the, the main factions, the bigger ones uh, with AM coming up now and then we'll have like more things um, planned as well. Um, yeah, we want to get the big factions done first because we feel like um, individual chapters, while they do add something, um, it just doesn't have the same ring to it, like if you have a completely new faction with the new mechanics and it can also be done by models and you have to make sure that like all the chapters really play different as, uh, enough as well. And you might have noticed that for some of our like our Space Marine abilities, we already tapped like multiple existing chapters, which also makes it a bit hard on that end. So it's mm, a bit hard. We definitely want to prefer to go for um, Infections first, even though like lots of people are asking for chapters. It's fine, it's fine. It's good. I still like the game <laughs> a lot. <laughs> That's good to hear, yeah. We yeah. also like we also <laughs> like it a lot. That's why we are still working on it as well. It's just um, yeah, yeah, the audience is great, like uh, yeah, positive yeah. feedback and whatnot. So yeah. Yeah. I just want to, to like uh, break the ice for everyone to ask questions. So that, that's uh, that's all my questions. Very question. grateful <laughs> for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Goodbye, guys. Bye. 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 Yeah, I mean, if, if I also expand on that, um, it's a matter of where you allocate resources, right? Um, do you do something totally unique or do you spend a lot of resources making um, chapters for Space Marines where their armor is can be a quite intense to get in right? to adjust all the models, to adjust all the textures um, with often smaller mechanical differences in how they play. So as Void said, we prefer the big stuff because Warhammer does have a ton of awesome races and people keep requesting new ones. It, it, <laughs> there's just so many <laughs> and we need like, how long have we needed to do a faction uh, on average? Like six, a eight lot, months. Got longer over time. <laughs> yeah, we got slower over time, sadly. Yeah, also like the AM models were really, like those were really taxing. And the like adaptive mechanics. Kind of the details. Yeah. yeah, adaptive mechanics, of course. Yeah, AdMac, let's say that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. I see Vix is also looking to, so I'll invite you, Vix. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Let's give him a moment. Maybe he just went to grab a super nice snack. Um, <laughs> Should we, we try Rectus while we're waiting? Yeah, let's try that. I've invited both now. I guess both can accept, but I'm sure they'll behave. <clears throat> hello there. Yes, hello. Yeah, hello. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, doing, doing very well. Um, quick question. Do you ever plan on adding a way to make it so that a map spawns with zero water? Because some map seeds, when you generate them randomly, end up with like this terrible ocean in the middle of the map where you get these really terrible peninsulas and areas, and it gets <laughs> quite irksome. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I guess technically we could do that. I don't think there's any reason. Like it can be modded at the moment easily. Okay. Uh, currently we're at like maximum is 95%. Uh, we could make a new setting for 1.0 if it's really um, like land mass 100%, I mean, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's... yeah, sure, we can add that, no problem. That'd be great. And we can Thanks squeeze a lot. it in for AdMac. <laughs> that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Awesome. No problem. Thanks. Uh, hello, Vix. Hello. Uh, hello. So I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, how did you guys enter the industry of uh, making video games? And the second one is, do you think it's possible for someone uh, with uh, no experience and no degree to enter the industry? Oh, that's <laughs> a huge question. We answer yeah, second like first? Uh, for us personally, yeah. I guess um, we've yeah. all ans entered slightly, maybe differently. Uh, for, mm -hmm. for Void and me, it was at the same time, but Sohel and Dan joined us a little bit later. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so just to... go, go in order. Sure. Uh, start and then me and I think go. Void already had something on his mind, so I'll let him. Okay. I'll let him go. Yeah, like um. So for me, like I, I always wanted to make games since I'm like, yeah. since I'm little, I was like drawing sketches and stuff and like maps because like, yeah, I really liked the whole concept of video games from young age on. And um, I studied computer science, like that's where I went into. And um, during the, the master, like uh, here in Germany, like back then it wasn't like um, bachelor and master, you had like the diploma just at the end. And um, I could specialize um, during the diploma, like on the things I want to focus on, which is like uh, graphics programming, software engineering, all these things that I knew I would kind of need for games. And like already um, in the first like months on the side, we started working or I started working on Conquest. And I know Rock from um, like actually Guild Wars. We played competitive Guild Wars together like in a team. And like that was also pretty successful. And there you can kind of I don't know. You you need contacts. I feel like if you are alone, you can do it alone. But uh, there are examples of indie games where like only one person really pulls all this stuff off. But that is like really rare if you like have the talents to do all of that. And it's obviously also a lot of effort and, and work and whatnot. You have to like pump into your hobby. But if it's your passion, I think it's possible. But for me, um, degree wise, to answer your question, like. I think you can do it without a degree. I mean, there's uh, plenty of examples, I think, in the industry of people who didn't finish any higher degree or so, like, and dropped out and now, like, super rich. <laughs> but uh, I know for me, it definitely helped because I could direct, like, what I studied, you know, computer science in the, at the lower months. It's, like, very broad and a lot of things, like, didn't really apply to games necessarily because mm -hmm. you, you start out very broad whenever you like study something but like later on you can actually specialize and then I really started to pick the stuff that I needed like also my diploma thesis you know like all topics that kind of are related or like go into each other and then it's actually becomes exciting and um, it definitely helped but I don't think it's it's needed on my, like if you really have the passion and invest the time like the internet is out there there's so much information available like yeah. you can just read it all up if you have a knack for it. Information, technology, information, age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think perhaps studying computer science in general is not the most time effective way of learning exactly the things that you will need to make games or even perhaps any specific kind of computer science field that you might go into. But it gives you a breadth of of, of knowledge um, definitely not needed I think in terms of uh, if you can do it alone as Void mentioned I fully agree with him you could do it alone but um, just starting off with him and now our team being four it's so valuable to be able to get feedback from one from the other and ricochet ideas and um, complement each other both in personalities but also in the skill set because it's so hard there's so many things you need to do in, when you're making video games that it's crazy being able to do it all alone um, it's impossible really at least to a very high degree so um, you can it's definitely best if you find peers you can work with 
they'll drag you on from from <laughs> the rough times um but yeah in terms of how i got started um i think void you dragged me in kind of with your passion mm -hmm. um <laughs> I, i'm i'm like what six seven years younger mm -hmm. um so a <laughs> yeah so i was still i think in high school and you were at uni um and you kind of start coding this what was it like a space it was in space and you moved like soldiers around in planets and you showed it to uh, me was yeah, it yeah like first screenshots yeah yeah that's right but i also wanted to do like a flight space simulator at one <laughs> point i had that it was lots of ideas and then it's more like what assets that are free and you can find and it's like oh yeah i mean it was rotating a lot with the interests until conquest came out of it yeah yeah but i i think that was exactly the right way to do it from your side because you mm -hmm. you had the passion you wanted to do it and you just started making something you just and i think that's my number one advice for anyone who wants to enter the field because it's also how we got discovered by slytherin our first publisher it was through a game we made even though the game didn't really sell anything it was I, i'm i guess I don't know what their initial reaction was when they saw it, but I guess it, it looked, looked good. Yeah, it looked <laughs> good and it looked, I think, proficient. Even though, if, even though maybe the you know, the business side was totally wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have the passion, you just need to start making stuff. That's my number one yeah, advice. Focused on competitive multiplayer, which is. Uh, yeah, yeah because that. we came from competitive <laughs> multiplayer gaming like guild wars and unreal tournament before etc but um that is like really hard like to make any money like you have a few heavyweights that can pull that off but you need like so much luck if you check all the competitive multiplayer games out there that have like no users on steam it's like oh, no, you, you need to cut it to both audiences because a lot of people want to play in single player and now um I mean, I, once you get older, you even notice it yourself. Like you can't, like it's too stressful. It's, it only works for a few years to really have this competitive stuff, like really hardcore, maybe in your free time a little bit, but um, the majority wants to just chill and have a good time. Uh, it's even more hardcore now with the absolutely ginormous esports events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of just, I guess, f um, Avoid inspired me. Then I started. I started just in the summer before I started uni. I started reading a C plus plus book. Started re learning C plus um, plus. He showed me the code, what he had so far. Gave me like a couple classes. I remember. I think one of them was the the timing code for the ticks, uh, or the <laughs> yeah, it was some kind of timer code. And he said he had some ideas what we could change. And then I started exploring it and how C++ works and all that stuff and what made sense and what didn't. And we got along really well. So we just kept <laughs> working together. Yeah, find like-minded people, I guess. Yeah, I think that's really important, even though it's really hard as well. And I think eventually we also found Sohel and Dan like that in different, in different ways. Maybe <laughs> you two can share how you started and how maybe you met. <laughs> Met us. So how, I think I found so how drunk in a gutter. Was that right, Soho? I can't remember. Did you find me drunk? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was uh, behind a uh, garbage, garbage truck. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Smoking shisha. Shisha bar. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean then you could go. I guess I'll go last. Okay. Okay. So I. I yeah, I've been a. Um, I've been working in the games industry as a games journalist. I worked for maybe 10 or 15 years. Spent a couple of years in PR for massive multiplayer online games and then kind of went freelance and was doing game writing, uh, consultancy, like all kinds of anything that paid the bills, basically, even photography and stuff like that. Um, and then, like, I saw an advert by, I think, Void and Rock for, um, for just like, like, you want to be a game writer and i was like oh okay i'll i'll send in some samples for that and they like them and then i ended up working on pandora with them um pandora has quite a lot i, I almost say pandora has more text in it because of all the short stories mm. than, um, than gladius than at least vanilla gladius obviously with all the dlc we've added it's, it's yeah. been a lot of there's a lot there's a lot of text in there now um but yeah so yeah but my my background is kind of humanities so i like i'm a, a 
politics, philosophy, and economics graduate from Oxford University, darling. Um, so yeah, I'm a. My background is nothing to do with uh, creative writing. Um, I'd almost say that it was just like trying that got me into this. Um, I'd also say like, like Vix, what 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 are you looking to get into? Which bit? Because obviously you see here, there's programming, writing, art. There's audio. There's like there's a load of different bits you can choose to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I. Um, I'm more into programming, but uh, mm-hmm. since I'm doing my, since I'm alone, <laughs> I cannot have to do everything. So mm. right now I'm, I'm uh, learning how to do modeling and programming. So you know, but I like finding a team is, is hard. I found some 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 teams, you know, but it's like uh, very not professional. But it's always good, mm-hmm. like you said, to to be multiple people to to cheer you up because it's very hard to always work alone all the time and yeah. then you have no feedback on your work and i completely agree and and i thank you for your uh, your advice it's very helpful yeah, yeah I, I would i would definitely say that like these days like you could probably get away without doing that computing degree and, and doing things like a udemy course or a course or a course learning unreal because it's when they're on sale they're very cheap they're as good as most of the I university degrees you might do. Yeah, it's learn, learn an engine, don't learn, learn the programming. A lot of these courses will teach you a bit of basic programming as part of the course. Um, I'll put some links in the general chat later for Unreal stuff. I know it's meant to be really good, mm-hmm. yeah. um, which which I'm tr- which I'm trying to do. And those are like le- if you learn the engine, then you don't. <laughs> you can like in Unreal, you can use blueprints. And you never even need to learn C plus plus. I mean, obviously a game will run like dog shit, but <laughs> you, you don't need to learn the programming. <laughs> until you get a programmer to nativize it later on, maybe once you've kind of proven out your, your design. So there's lots of shortcuts, but yeah, you're absolutely right. The best thing to do is learn your skill the best you can and find people of other bits who also want to, um, who also want to make it and who also want to kind of make games. Like there are often like forums like gamedev.net or TigSource or places like that, where there are people hanging out looking for mod teams or modding is a great way to get started. Yeah, so, modding is fine. a great way to get started, I agree. Because you find like-minded people with similar interests and often similar proficiency, but but actually your dilemmas maybe also kind of how we found Sohail, even though we were already two working on a game and kind of had a product. Um, maybe Sohail, you can tell us how we we reached out to you and how you eventually started working with us. If you remember, yeah, okay. yeah I was about to say yeah, probably yeah. twelve years anymore. ago. I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the time I was studying mechanical engineering, but I, I, I never saw like game development as something like serious you could do. That just sounded like a fun hobby, and I started putting my artwork on Deviant Art. But then I started getting uh, commissions, and started earning a pretty good living just doing commissions. Uh, and I then that's how that, rock <laughs> yeah hmm. that's how rock and uh, uh, void uh, contacted me they saw my deviant art and uh, they asked me if i wanted to join uh, and help them like make the make conquest a first game um and i said no at first cuz uh, I-, I had been working a lot with like modders and and it it, it exactly like you said vix it's I felt like people weren't serious enough. I felt like I was always the last guy to like drop the project. Everybody like came on and then jumped off after like a month or two. So I wasn't super serious. But then like after three months, I just randomly thought I'd look them up and see how they were doing. And they had actually made a lot of progress. So that kind of impressed me. So I got in touch with them again and they still needed someone. So I jumped aboard. I oh, pretty close to how it actually happened. Should I correct what? or do we want to let it say? <laughs> well, I, I probably every, each of us has probably his own um, uh, experience of it. But yeah, I, I think that's very close. Okay. I, I think one of the things you said was really important that like we contact, contacted you at first and you... Yeah. We, Even we though needed you, the image for the main menu, it was return version two. The image, yeah, That's so amazing. I remember. You let like us in, use Yeah, you image. can use that image. Yeah. And then later on, wanted to make the game three D because we were still two D back then. We didn't have a three D modeler. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and then we transitioned to three D because he joined the team. 
I think that was really cool though yeah. because I mean, we asked him for an image and then afterwards he, he saw further progress in the game and got even more interested because yeah. he saw that we weren't just like, you know, we didn't just want an image from him to use it and then drop the project. We probably, what was it, probably like half a year later again came to him or he came to us, I don't remember. And we saw the update, how far we've I gotten. I think I came to you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, it also depends on like where you want to get into uh, game development. Do you want to get in on like a, a big game studio or do you want to start doing something on your own? Because I think if you want to get in with a big game studio, then you probably need some kind of education just to get your foot inside the door. If you want to get going on your own, you don't need much. You just need uh, like the ego to think that you're better than everybody else <laughs> keep going. so i mean and nowadays especially uh, with like unreal engine and all of these like uh, game engines that you can easily like get a hold of and start experimenting with it's it, the bar is is a bit lower at least and there's like you can buy assets uh, so it's it's definitely easier but i think the most important thing you're gonna need is like motivation hmm. yeah I, I i think you're right totally <laughs> thank you for your answers that was really helpful no, awesome. no problem yep. thank you for the question indeed yep. and passionately answer i like that hmm. at least it gave us some time we could feel <laughs> uh, 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 okay uh, so the German ADA, uh, that sounds like it's for you, Void. Let's, mm, see. We'll see. Let's see what the German 88 says. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Yeah, I am here. Uh, my name is Tim, actually, not the German. Or, yeah, my call is the German 88. Um, I had a couple of questions for Gladius uh, that me, me and my buddies play. Um, is there going to be any other more updates, like adding Titans uh, to Chaos and Space Marines, uh, for question number one? Um, um, Titans, oh. just just to answer um, generally, uh, we definitely would like to make more uh, unit packs and such. I think that's a great opportunity. Um, concerning Titans, exactly. It's an issue of scale primarily uh, because ha getting a knight in um, kind of still definitely works, but a titan is so massively bigger that it would need to cover multiple tiles, like seven tiles. And that's, that's just not something we are looking to do right now. But expanding <laughs> expanding rosters in general, though, definitely is. Uh, I yeah, think there's I think a, lot of, a lot of cool units we can still bring in. Yeah, then yeah, um, we'd love to have Titans, definitely. But they, but yeah, the uh, I think we just talked about it before, and the amount of technical effort for Rob Void and Rock. I mean, it would be a we're a very small studio, and the amount of technical effort would preclude us doing a lot of other more interesting things. So. It's, I mean, it's a difficult payoff. It, it could happen. Just I'm speaking totally hypothetically, which is probably what Void wanted to add as well. The, the, it could be that we were so inspired by all the Titans, etc., and if we could fit them in into multiple factions and not just the Imperium factions, um, to to really create a new mechanic where we can focus a whole DLC around it. That that I could see that potentially happening. I'm not gonna fully discredit it. Um, not sure if you wanted to add something else for it. Yeah, like for example, for chaos, I think like bringing, for example, a brass scorpion isn't like too far fetched or something like that. Mm -hmm. So because we already have units with those kind of point costs, the similar point costs in, um, and like chaos doesn't have something there, which is he's probably um, referring to the uh, Steam forums thread that is there, and I feel like yeah, hmm. I, I would be definitely up for it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, uh, it does. Yes, thank you. Um, I had a couple more items sure. for Gladius. Um, my buddies are texting me. <laughs> um, are there any, are there any um 
uh, reviews uh, and or overhauls for weapons and units in general as well. Um, for example, like my buddy sent me um, like the Tau Piranhas. Um, you know, they're very fast, which is a good for recon and exploring, but they have single melt which in theory should do nothing to infantry, um, but decent damage to tanks. Um, and so the effectiveness of units are limited um, and whatnot. And, and basically, you know, you don't ever build them, right? Um, uh, in addition to uh, the piggyback off that, um, you know, all these rush builds... Uh, in Gladius, um, you try to get to tier, you know, five through eight troop level, and the tier one through four are, are like non-existent or not worth building in Gladius. And I think that it not necessarily ruins the game, but it, it just makes the game less fun to play because my Space Marine infantry is garbage compared to my Centurion, you know, uh, Devastator. So why do I build that infantry unit when I can just rush build to uh, to that specific unit in addition to all the other factions are the same way um, So that was the one comment and biggest complaint we've had about the game um, And so is there any sort of catch-up mechanic? Um, that can be added to it like limiting or um, making um, uh, 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 The resources uh, lesser for the these units as as the game goes on or or in the beginning of the game um, uh, type deal um, so sorry, I'm, I'm a couple questions in there at one. So, so my first thing was, are there any reviews uh, or overhauls uh, for weapons? And then my second part again was for the tr for the lower troop levels. Is there any way to get them to be more um, more willing to build them and, and be more um, uh, 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 available and, and, and want to actually use them and build them out uh, for later games, uh, later uh, time frames of the game? Mm -hmm. I uh, thanks for the questions. I think the you raise great points. I think we're we're with our design. We're trying to also cover lots of different map settings and so on. So um, I'm guessing you played on probably slightly bigger maps or maybe medium size with four, or five, six players, something like that. So the right. the is that correct? Yeah, we play around. We play. A, we have four player games. Two, two, uh, two teams of mm -hmm. two. Yeah. So on on standard speed settings, that's usually what happens. Um, you have good suggestions, uh, I think, in how to sometimes remedy it. Uh, another one is to add upgrades to early infantry, either to scale up the squad sizes or make them more sturdy and so on. Um, we don't have like great solutions right now, but it's definitely something we're looking at. Um, also, as we design Zephon and how we do things there, because there we can experiment with the base mechanics a little more um, and go a bit crazier just because it's our own IP as well. But in terms of Gladius, uh, nothing for scaling up uh, early stuff right now. We're constantly looking at the weapons. I don't think we have any big um, things for the AdMec DLC, but Lawrence and me uh, want to have like a big or a larger balance overhaul when after the DLC comes out, so we can see how what the state of everything is and so on. Um, okay. Totally, totally hear your concerns, though. It, it's a hard. It's a hard trade-off, right? Because it's really easy to make the early stuff too strong as well. And then you're even at the worst spot because then you just build the early stuff. You don't even get to the medium stuff. Uh, right. I saw yeah. I saw a lot of people on Discord what they... Th there's like an interesting meta, I think, that's shifting more and more towards um, very fast pace speeds. Um, so I'm guessing that's also so that they cover more late game units. But then again, you're just shifting the whole thing towards... Uh, later units right um and then uh, one last thing for gladius is um did, you know sorry, the, the game is did, uh, why do you have something to add oh go ahead sorry yeah um yeah i, I, ju I just wanted to point out that this is also like a bit of a um, design decision like of different taste because for example um on the one hand you have games like uh, warhammer or for example starcraft 2 where you have your early game units that hold up till the very end 
but in like a lot of um, other four axes, like for example, Master of Orion or whatever, like you also, um, all the units do become obsolete, like your frigates or destroyers or cruisers and whatnot. And um, especially in a four X game, that that you actually change the units and like have some units that don't stay till the very end is, in my opinion, not necessarily a bad choice. It is a bit unintuitive for Warhammer, though, because from the board game, like you're used to that you see like you complement yeah. with a lot of infantry right and like you kind of want to have that in the late game but on the other hand when you can build like bane blades and whatnot like who wants to just because um like of the army size you have as well you don't want to move like a ton of low level troops so one would need some something like indeed upgrades of the squad sizes or like merge multiple squads or something like that but um that also has visualization constraints and also weapon balance constraints again because um, we we modeled the board game pretty closely um, with the weapon thing. Like um, if you, for, for example, have a last gun, and even if it has a lot of damage, right? If you fire in a squad of infantry, you can only hit like this one unit at most. And like if you fight against already uh, chaos cultists, you notice that they take like almost no damage due to the um, health capping the damage of the weapon. And like it's being so many. So if you kind of have even more squad sizes like that, it starts to become a bit ludicrous. So. But I get your point. Like it's unintuitive for Warhammer, and might not have been the right decision to go that way, or we should have planned like with more upgrades. Hmm. But it's also a very fundamental thing to change at this point, unfortunately. Yeah, I, th I think for Zeph Zephon generally, it's a thing we talked about was making it so that early game units to prevent them becoming obsolete have upgrades that kind of highly specialize yeah. them for the end game, right. so that you you end up with ways that they kind of. They might be useless as they were, but once you've you've got their up their upgrade, they suddenly pivot and they can be game changers in themselves. Yeah, and Void said perfectly. I think it's easier to do that um, when you're crafting the whole uh, design of the game, the IP and the units themselves. Because Warhammer does not uh, it works differently. There's no, they don't have that problem. <laughs> so yeah. There a lot of the upgrades or modability to the units you can do don't take that into account to the degree we would often need on a unit. And um, I mean, as, as you can imagine, we can't just add random stuff to units that don't make sense for that unit or isn't on the model or already in the IP and so on. So it's, it's a pretty rough spot. Um, I, I think some models have tried with unit cost scaling like the more duplicate units you, you have i don't know if you've played with that i personally haven't a lot um, the 30 percent rule yeah we we haven't played with that yet but i know what you're talking about the dlc for that mm -hmm. would love to hear your thoughts on that if you do manage to give it a try mm -hmm. okay um the, la the last thing i had for this um that we were like really interested in is um you know right now it is all about like if I get to your cities first and I, I wipe you out, that's what the game's all about. So we were curious if there's if there's any other secondary objective that can be added. Um, like if you hold more than 50% of like the outposts, um, like a turn timer will start to count down from like 20 turns and then the game will end. Um, you know, things, things of that nature. So j just like a whole secondary objective uh, to the game itself instead of, um, you know, just a total wipe of, of the uh, army slash cities. I like the outpost thing. Actually, it's the first time I've heard that specifically. Um, it's been suggested a lot of times, I think, also on Discord to do a, a relic based one uh, where you have to capture lyrics, uh, relics, uh, sure. f uh, the artifacts for long enough and you win through that. I've discussed it with Void so many times. I'm usually the one bothering him about it. Um, but <laughs> at the, at the end, we, um, f uh, voted against it because there were a lot of issues with it. Um, I don't remember the relic like one yeah. for outposts, if you would just control the outpost, so you wouldn't need to have to hold like a certain amount of a percentage of outposts for a certain duration to win something like that. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Mm. That would be interesting to think about more for sure. Yeah, alternate game mode generally. Anything with outposts in general, since they're, you know, 
they're the most common thing on the map yeah. to make it, you know, victory point objectives. There's also more of them, so it's easier to argue that it's more balanced. Yeah, I mean, there is really not, like, this is, this sounds actually doable. That, like, that you can definitely think about adding that. That one's much better, yeah. The problem with artifacts, I remember now, was that there's so few and people yeah, would and never be happy. And the distribution and the ground. Yeah. Um, but outposts, yeah, it's we'll consider that for sure. I uh, can't promise anything, but yeah, it's a cool. Yeah, I think I, I think I remember when we were originally doing design, we were talking about beyond the quest lines having alternate victory conditions for factions, a bit like the hut in Star Wars Risk, if anyone's played that. But it was one of those things that just felt like it was a with the quest lines as well, which is almost a fractional victory condition. It doesn't feel, it felt like an unnecessary extra. Yeah. We kind of ended up with the quest victory things, but they require you to do the whole quest line. So it's a little different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> cool. It's all I had for now. Thanks guys. All right. Thank yep. you so much. Thank you. It, is it okay if I ask some questions from the chat, which I've seen going coming up? Sure. Well, you do have three oh. more brave people, though, so... I, I would... <laughs> they're, they're, they're very quick questions. One of them was, add mech DLC when? <laughs> um, so that we don't... Soon. Yeah. <laughs> soon, yeah. It, was announced, soon. It, it was announced it's in November, so you won't have to wait very long. I've been told that uh, we're trying to get the Steam page up tomorrow, so keep an eye out. I can't promise it's definitely going to happen, but... Uh, keep an eye out and you'll have lots more details to go on. And I I think also, I'm not sure if a date will be in there, but um, there will be more info if that goes live tomorrow. I will obviously let you all know if it happens. Okay, next question. Yeah, we'll how many announce it here. Yep. <laughs> next question is how many Admech Codex units made it in? Oh man, lots. Um, that... One of the things we had to do for AdMech was use 9th edition, right? Because in 7th, there was split between Skitari and uh, Cult Mechanicus. And there's some units that are only in 9th edition. Uh, I probably can't say which exactly. There might have been some on the screenshots. I don't remember all the screenshot units. Uh, but the roster number is about the same as uh, the other DLCs. Uh, the faction I guess, DLCs. I think we can say there are definitely Castellans. <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely right. say that. Old school ones. Yeah. Finally, after all the DLCs. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, our uh, roster um, for units has been like 17, 18, around there when we release a faction. So expect that. And the final question, the question we always get, <laughs> what about the army painter and stroke map editor? Uh, why uh, help me <laughs> yeah, i don't i don't know um like it, yeah it, like it's, i think we said in the last armor it was like one of the regrets that we didn't bring it but like now all the models aren't like really designed for it if you want to have a sophisticated army painter you would need like two team colorings you would have to go over all the units like then the channels how they're used in the coloring texture i guess we would have to split and use the normal alpha channel or something like that the second team collab and then like decals it's it's a lot of work like yeah it would have I, to be i don't think we'll get to it would have to be it for was Gladys a mistake too. it was a mistake honest mistake we underestimated it like we didn't just you know, should not have been the case well it, it's easy to say like now right but we had no mm -hmm. idea how successful the game would be and i definitely did not think we would be doing dlcs for three years plus that's right like i <laughs> I that's mean, right. that's insane. Like you don't plan on that. So we did what we could with the initial budget. Um, budget, I, timelines, etc. Like it was already pushed. Like yeah. it was ugh, rough times. Yeah. So now at this point, it will have to be for a sequel, I think. For both those things. And that's it for audience questions. You may return to your <laughs> pre-programmed programming. Yay. Okay. Uh, Bow guy, I would love to hear what you have to say to us. I hope. If you're still around. 
pro waited so long, like. Yeah. <laughs> Good guy. So another question we've had whilst we're waiting was, um, like, how do we get? How did you all get into forty k? I think making this game was my real. Oh, Bow guy, you there? Yeah. Ah, do you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yes. Hear you. Hello. Hi. Uh, th thanks for the game. Uh, I have a question uh, more on, on the development. Um, if you have to uh, recruit a new uh, developer, how do you approach it? Because uh, I work in a company where we currently are hiring, but uh, we have trouble to find new uh, suited candidate. What kind of candidates are you looking for? What um... for, uh, for dev for my my uh, programmers example. or artists yeah. or programmers? Programmer. Uh, we haven't been searching for programmers yet because why didn't me like to control everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> um we've had recently over the last year or so been searching for a lot of different people and i think it varies so much between the 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 fields that it's really hard to give uh, advice maybe because we haven't gone through that we i guess the closest we've gotten was working with um both isle and kai they were basically mothers for Glad. Well, first for Pandora, and Kai was for um, for Gladius, and then basically uh, they. Exp well, it's more that they came to us or they started talking to us, um, and we eventually um, agreed that they would try to do something in the code base as well. And we gave them a try, saw how it worked out. But in, in both those cases for us, we found that we preferred to uh, be more in control of the code base. So um, we've never, though, ser have been searching for a programmer so far. OK, um, thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for the response. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I couldn't do anything better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Best of luck. Best of luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can tell you that it's been because we've now been searching for a writer, for an artist, and for well, for different artists, for illustrators, and both three D modelers and video editors. And it's been very different for each of those. The hardest to find has been three D modelers. So if there's any like three D modelers out there, uh, either good at texturing or making 3d meshes please come say hello to any of us we would be super mm. happy to uh, talk to you um that's been really hard but on the other hand like writers there's lots of writers um that have applied to our recent posting so that's been very different i think it it probably is gonna depend a lot on exactly what kind of proficiencies you want the programmer but i know for myself i would have to give the person lots of um tests maybe not tests so much but test projects or little things to do inside our code base and see how um how meticulous they are and how well they work and so on so but yeah, it sounds pretty hard. When we do that, they often uh, don't do the test and uh, looking uh, <laughs> in uh, other company. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard, right? Because programmers actually have lots of options and uh, video games at least aren't usually paid that well mm -hmm. for, for computer science people. Um, yeah, lo really lo lots, of programmers. <laughs> <laughs> lots of programmers I know uh, leave the industry to go to like finance and get paid like insane yeah. amounts more so it's because the, because it's a cross transferable skill and it's a very limited skill and requ normally requires quite a lot of le le levels of education it's in huge demand and salaries are going up and up and up it's yeah. close to what i did <laughs> <laughs> so are you now searching for a programmer for your finance industry or <laughs> for making games mm. no but uh, we're working with the, the finance uh, sector mm -hmm. okay 
yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, it's hard to find really good people. Yeah. Okay, thanks. For except, the... except writers, where there's, ton, there's, there's absolutely tons of writers. <laughs> <laughs> but some are really special, Dan. Yeah. Oh, I love only, you too, dude. There's only one in this chat. <laughs> for now, for now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I'm having. I'm, I'm basically my, my day job is taking up more and more of my time, so I'm having to step step down a little bit. So we're getting a, a, a writer in to support the team. So it's good. It's a good. It's a good step. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the question. Thanks for your game. You're welcome. Happy you enjoyed. Um, GF Seb, I'm not sure if you've been already invited or why I can't invite you, but I invited him. Sorry. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. If you're around, we're happy to take your question. Otherwise, I think we will slowly wrap it up. If there's no more questions. Um, there is, there is, there are. We do have the question earlier, which was. Um, oh. Oops, Seb's here. I'll, I'll, I'll let, let him speak, and then, then I'll ask the, the text questions we've got. Hello, I just had a question for Gladius. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a handful of units that can switch weapons. I think it was the heavy weapon teams that you could go from like anti infantry to anti eagle. So it's just wondering if that's something you'll be expanding on, let's say for other unit packs, uh, just because some factions like Eldar, they have very specialized units, but then Space Marines, you have like three flavors of Devastator. So it's just wondering if that's something you might do rather than like a whole new unit, if they upgrades where you can switch the weapon out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are a few that do that, and I was just curious if that's like a feature you would expand upon. Yeah, I think it entirely depends if you can conceptually imagine the unit swaps that weapon on the fly on the battlefield. Um, and also, so basically it has to look pretty much the same, which is why we did it on the weapons team or could do it. it also, how they can... It often depends on how it is in the board game. So the heavy weapons mm -hmm. team can decide on the fly which missile they shoot. But the tactical space marines and the devastator space marines are actual different point costs, different units and so on. So we go by that. Um, I usually like the mechanic, but I also don't want to overdo it. Because um, it can get yeah. really annoying to swap... Uh, <laughs> swap the weapons all the time on the fly and like you know you have to swap and then check the damage and then swap again and then like you have to estimate what's going to be the best overwatch thing so it can be quite clumsy it's not my preferred user experience kind of thing and um, the last thing would be that if they wield a different weapon they usually have to have different animations so it's you know you should a last gun differently than uh, than you should a rifle kind of um so if the animations have to get redone maybe it has to get re-rigged as well and it's kind of like doing a new unit for us most of the time unfortunately okay so let's say for example if you wanted to add different types of devastators so i think right now you just have the last gun ones uh so would you rather add a separate unit or would it be possible to like make a toggle where if you're inside your city or inside an outpost, you can swap effectively to a different devastator type unit? Would that be something you could do in an engine or is it just way too out there? Um, um, oh. That sounds like a cool mechanic exclusive to a new faction. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, you had something, Vine? Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, in, in Pandora, we did have the weapon swapping, like, with upgrades. But, like, if you would allow that in general, I think it would have to be supported for a large variety of units so that there's a point if we allow to really re-equip the units. Like, if we, um, if we would bring them with different weapons, like, I would probably make different producible units, I think, because they also, like, the weapons are very different. And, like, just upgrading in cities... Um, 
I feel like the whole game has to be designed around that. If you want to bring that, like this unit workshop where you equip all the different loadouts, et cetera, et cetera, like you have to do that from the get go and really prepare for everything. I think for Gladius, that ship has sailed, like to really allow re equipping. Yeah, it would at be least too much, a... especially with all the factions out now. Yeah. The more like, yeah, the more we factions, the more DLC we bring, the more we're kind of set in stone because the work to change anything is like, um, it's getting kind of astronomical like there's so many units at this point and often like the weapons for example are modeled into the unit texture etc so if you want to like remodel it like you you have to like remodel parts of the texture or like change parts of the texture etc like duplicate otherwise waste video memory it's ah. yeah, yeah. I, I like, think at the beginning we had it flexible but like uh, later on i think we kind of went with this design decision and it's a design stuck here thing yep. yeah it's a design decision because you also if you can swap it on the fly you're also discrediting the choice you make as to as you make the unit it's going to be easier to just counter something else and i'm i'm not a big fan of that i i like it when your decisions have a heavier weight and you have to stand by them and can get countered without just adjusting but uh, I would also like harder to read because you look at the unit, you know, like normally you see devastators and all, all right, that's what you're at. And when like they have different weapons, like you have to look either at a part of the icon or kind of zoom in, what is he equipped with, etc. Yeah. So um, that's also downsides to it. I could see it like, I mean, Tyranids <laughs> were kind of a good um, option for doing that, which we kind of did it in a more roundabout way that you can destroy your own unit and then regain production and then make a different unit faster. But you, I can imagine the same thing being done with just clicking on your termaguns and uh, then clicking a button into what unit do you want to change them, and then you have hormaguns, for example. Um, That's so that, that would be that would, they would take us up so close to Starcraft, <laughs> unfortunately, the, the kind of evolution button. But well, yeah, yeah, it would. In StarCraft, it's very predetermined who can go into what. Here, it could mm -hmm. be very broad, like it it kind of already is, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm still regretting the Tyranid City's not, not walking, but yeah, that, that, <laughs> I'm going to be but hurt about that for years. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say, we've got five minutes remaining, so we probably want to get through uh, questions a bit more quickly, if that's okay. Yeah, let's fast fire some stuff. Cool. Thank you, GF Seb. Let's get the scry in, and then yeah, let's do the scry. Yeah, I've got I've got a few questions. We can just do some rapid fire at the very end. Okay, the scry. Hello, the scry. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, proxy. Hello. hello. Uh, <laughs> so, two quick questions. Uh, why has Gladius Forty K been so successful for you guys? Ooh. Ooh. Um, uh, it's a really good uni universe that we've done some really nice hardcore design on the tactical war game aspects of. What do you think, Rock? Whew. Um, I, I'm not sure how to answer that. I think it's, <laughs> a, it, it's an, an amazing IP, and I think we've twisted the Forex formula in a nice way to fit the IP, because we didn't do like a civilization like and our trade between different factions kind of thing. We really stepped into and leaned into the the core of the board game, I think. And we were um, also able to add leverage the, the tabletop so well with the attributes of the units. And I think people really appreciate that. Um, so it's, I think it's been a combination of those two things. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And my last yeah. question is how do you feel about some members in the community coming up with uh, their own mods, uh, particularly the the balancing mods? Um, are you offended by them, or do you like that people <laughs> no. are trying to, um, in their eyes, make the game better? I think it's awesome, to be honest. Like because um, the dedicated multiplayer audience, like it's it's hard to data to like the entire audience with balance changes because like you identify certain problems you know like in your multiplayer matches or due to certain play style of players and this way you can kind of work around it to still like keep it exciting and interesting 
And um, I mean, you can also iterate on it. We like have the information, we can look at it and think like, oh, that's a really cool idea. Like we want to bring that in over as well. Like, so it reduces our workload and that is really great. And I also just to, um, to get back to the first question quickly, um, for the success, I think also is the amount of content we are putting out, like so yeah. many factions with so many units. Like we have like this pipeline set up and with the mechanics and whatnot, like to be really efficient about it. And I think that helps a lot. Like when people see, oh, wow, they they keep supporting that game and they bring out so many factions. Nine like factions. are we now the game with the most <laughs> factions? I don't know like how many it will be, but I think we might go for the record here. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you guys are on a roll. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, that's all my questions. Thanks, guys. Thanks for Thank stopping you by, so much. That's Thank great. You. We, love your, we love your streams. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Yep. Um, question following up from that one from the chat was, do you aim to do more Gladius content after AdMac? Yes. Okay, cool. and more, the more coming, more coming. Yay. And if you have, if you do, follow up to that question, have you considered <laughs> increasing the Gladius team size to increase the rate content gets released at? I don't know, uh, Dan, how much writing <laughs> will you do for us in the future? Uh, like for, 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 for Gladius, I will stop sleeping so I can keep writing. You know that. Awesome. <laughs> I um, think we're slowly so you... scaling up also to fit the Zephyr stuff in. I'm not sure yeah, if Gladius yeah. will go faster, but we don't want to sacrifice Gladius to do Zephyr, so we're scaling up to fit that in. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bottleneck is program as, as we just had that conversation. Um, it's well, it's uh... it's usually artists, but yeah. Oh right, it's yeah. like the models. Like whenever we get close to release, like it's usually the assets. It's just like all these units. Like as I mentioned earlier with AdMac, like they are so detailed. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, I think you guys are gonna absolutely love the details on the AdMac units and the animations and the little arms wriggling about. I think it looks the best yet so you're saying mm. you don't actually need to scale me up or scale you up we need to scale so up. yes please right? clone <laughs> yeah like it's really 3d assets yeah, and animations like which is the bottleneck for this one oh yeah and we need like always the models sent out you know for references etc etc because everything is mm -hmm. against workshop we, of course we did scale that up so mm -hmm. we had uh, that's right a that's new true. guy taking photos for references and coordinating that whole thing which is why we are not missing the admec uh, release by probably months <laughs> yeah next and it saves me a bunch of time too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question. Um, any thoughts on adding more biomes? Oh, like we <laughs> technically we we could, but I mean, like, uh, like the. I think if we find if we behind. find the right <laughs> if we find a good artist that can help us out with it, I'm I'm totally up for it. I'm not sure if it will just come as a free thing or if it will no. be a bigger thing uh, oh, in the oh, DLC. Like, oh. Depends how much oh. we would add probably. Mm. But yeah, I think if we get a good artist and more artists help, uh, you can see the general problem we're having. <laughs> okay, okay. Rapid fire questions for the last couple. Um, Zephon Alpha Test. Are we having a Zephon Alpha Test anytime soon? Probably not that soon, but next year. Next year, very good. 2022. We'll for have Zephyr a vertical Alpha. slice end of this year, which probably no one can play yet, but um, we are going to play <laughs> internally. So yeah, um, let's get some matches going. And then once we're happy with that, like we're going to try to get some feedback. I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, all the all the I... dedicated people around the, the Discord, we we're looking at you guys. You guys are going to be the first ones to to hear from us. <clears throat> we value you the most. <laughs> Uh, right after that. What was your <laughs> <laughs> and Sawyer. 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 Thanks. <laughs> uh, I got a <laughs> got a question here. Um, the question that Skeletop Cop. I can't pronounce his name. Skeletop. Yes, I can see you, Skeletop. He's very excited about his question. But yes, <laughs> he asked, "How did we like? How did we get into 40k? And what's your favorite factions?" Let's quickly go through everyone, starting with Sohal. How did you get into 40k, and what is your favorite faction? Um, I started with fantasy. Uh, 40k I got into with Gladius, but uh, I've been uh, 
uh, buying models for Warhammer Fantasy for a long time. And my favorite faction is Astro Militarum. Nice. And what was your favorite one in Fantasy while we've got you? Ooh, Skaven, probably, but yeah, so many yeah. cool ones. Yeah, is, uh, I don't know. I, don't make me choose. <laughs> well, remember, remember uh, Admechar, basically, Space Skaven, so you can be well in there. Um, yeah. Rock, do you, do you like 40k? <laughs> I love 40k. I haven't been. What's really... your favorite? Uh, the first time I came in contact with it was how well, when i was a kid uh, a friend of my brother is uh, painted models and so on and i was admiring that part i didn't have the budget in any shape way or form to buy it themselves <laughs> yeah, <same. laughs> uh, but i admired the whole process and how f- freaking awesome they looked uh, my favorite of course admec what the heck <laughs> oh. <laughs> void void your, your palpable disgust came across the airwaves there What's your what's your favorite? <laughs> How did you get into well, what's your favorite? Necrons, question? Necrons, absolutely Necrons. Yeah, uh, Necrons, they're so great. Yeah, Trez, like Trez the entire art style, like uh, the, it's it's just cool, like the Terminator in the desert when they when they walk and stomp, like the versatile weaponry, like the region. I always like region. It's Simple like, and effective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Re- and relentless tide of iron. <laughs> um, so my my favorite ones I like I've been playing Fantasy and Forty K since weirdly I have a copy of like Fantasy First Edition here and yeah I've been playing f- since the early the mid eighties uh, and my favorite is Orcs fucking hell that you've got, you've got to have it with the boys you know they're the, they're the real ones so a bit more daka daka so I like the Orcs and Chaos um, yeah I like like all the baddies basically and the Tyranids are cool too because they eat everything and they are kind of just all, Damn, just one, not three. Oh, I love them all. I want to buy them all. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a huge pile of shame under my desk here. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, awesome. I, I, the... think, I think we I should think wrap enough. it up. Yeah, to not, to not go too long. But we'll do this again soon. Um, would love to talk with more of you guys that also have been writing the questions in chat. Um, there's nothing scary going on here. So if next time you have some courage will happy to welcome you but yeah, we'll... i must can come and like complain that the balance of admec like who the hell designed or balanced that i must have smoked something <laughs> <laughs> well yeah um <laughs> so we'll wrap it up here thanks to everyone that joined us asked questions both in chat and even more in voice uh hope to see you again soon and keep an eye out tomorrow on the steam page keep refreshing maybe there's some cool new stuff to see bye everyone <laughs> yep Ciao. thanks all bye bye